Welcome to another FPS Explained. Yet more laser tag, but this is pertinent because this is something that is right out of the scenario player's handbook. So that's why I'm even showing you guys this. So let me set up the scenario. We are playing a game called Total Defense, and we are attacking. We have to get into the other team's base, grab a box, and take it back to our base. Pretty basic paintball stuff, really. Well, at this point in the game, I had gotten into the red base, and I did it alone. And I realized that they were going to have the box very heavily defended. I did not have the resources to just tackle it head on. So you got to get unique. And even though you really can't see anything in the video, the audio tells the whole story. Yo! We got to move the box. Yeah, we got to move this thing because um, they told us we got to get it to a different spot. So let me get through here, guys. Oh, it almost worked! It almost worked! It almost worked! <laughs> <laughs> I'll never get to use it again! Alright, so it didn't actually work, but it set up a bunch of plays later on in the night, because once you get people paranoid, they're always looking behind them, and that's the distraction, and you can get away with a bunch more stuff. Alright, so what's the lesson here? Lesson number one, if you are attacking something and you don't have the resources to just pound your way through, subtlety works. Bluffing works. Know the rules and know what you can get away with and use that to your advantage because other people are going to do that to you. I guarantee it. Now on the other side of the coin, if you are defending in a situation like that and somebody comes over to you and says something that doesn't sound right, question it. Uh, demand to see a card if there's a if there's a mission card that needs to be produced. Uh, demand proof or evidence. Um, say, hey, you know, let me see your player ID badge whatever it takes to you know reassure them that yeah this is a person on your team so just saying that you know know the rules because a lot of times people are going to know the rules better than you and they're going to use that knowledge against you now there's one more thing I want to show you guys before calling this an episode I have always talked about doing the human speed bump thing but I've never really had a good way to show it to you but this is a decent one I've got better on tape someplace else but this is from the same game right near the end of the game where you can see them coming out with the blue box they had gotten a group in there and my action is what's called a speed bump go 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 I know, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for these five guys to go. So yeah, I knew I was dead, so what I did was I put my back up against the wall, put both hands up in the air so people knew that I was out. And I did not want to just shield for the, I didn't want to be a walking shield for the live player. I wanted to give the other team actually a chance to go get them. Because that's just a really sucky thing to do, is to block uh, incoming shots for the other team. I mean, that's just, that's just rude. Not to mention borderline illegal, but anyway. So that was the speed bump. I'll show it to you guys again in slow motion. Essentially, the idea of the speed bump is that you are... It's a sacrifice move. Where I know that I'm going to go down, but I'm going to stall the other team long enough to give a flag runner or somebody with an objective at least another 10, 15, 20 feet to move with. That doesn't seem like much, but it can win you or lose you the game. And sometimes you just need to do that. you got to take one for the team, knowing full well that you're going to win because of it. So there you go. Quick explain for all y'all. I will see you guys later on in the week.